Hello everyone and welcome to the second tutorial on this channel and in this one we're going to be talking about uh, Modo and a plugin for it called Mesh Fusion and also showing how we can take Mesh Fusion models and uh, remesh them in ZBrush and also in 3D Coat. So to start off with, uh, here is a, a mini sub that I created uh, using Mesh Fusion, and this is something that would be kind of in the 1950s. Uh, kind of looks like a, a, a P51 Mustang or a uh, F86 Saber kind of design, and uh, it, it kind of fits into that era. And something that was really easy to do uh, using Mesh Fusion. And basically, what Mesh Fusion allows you to do is uh, add and subtract shapes. Uh, called Boolean operations, and uh, these shapes can uh, be ones that come with Mesh Fusion. So there's about 40 or so uh, that come with Mesh Fusion. Of course, you can also use uh, your own models. Uh, it's a good idea to have models that are well organized and um, and also. Uh, ones that uh, are as simple as possible so that uh, you can create these designs. Uh, two things before I get started with this is that uh, this looks a little dense, meaning that there's a lot of polygons on it, and that's because it's kind of in the final stages before I take it over into uh, ZBrush and uh, modify it. But basically, uh, as you build these things up, you can choose the mesh density that you want so that they fuse together uh, nicely. So um, here is a schematic of what's going on. So I've got all these shapes. And again, I've just used the basic shapes that come with Mesh Fusion for this model. So all these ones coming off of this branch of the tree are added together. And then all these ones that are coming off this branch of the tree are subtracted. Uh, you can also do intersections, which would be this branch of the tree, but I'm not really uh, doing any intersection intersections in this one. And uh, just by adding these simple parts together and subtracting some other parts from it, I've uh, been able to uh, develop this design. Uh, again, Boolean operations are not really something new. They've been available in different applications. But what I really uh, like here is uh, that this helps me with the design process, meaning uh, I can do iterations of this design very easily and see what the results are uh, versus having to um, do the Boolean, see what the result is, and then come back and then do another Boolean and see what the result is. Uh, all the things that uh, I need to do in Mesh Fusion happen in real time. And uh, just to give you a quick example of that, so supposing uh, I wanted to make a different iteration of this uh, model, so I'll just choose this shape down here. And uh, let's say I decide to make an iteration of it where I'm going to be moving it forward. So um, I can do that in real time and the model will update in real time. And uh, let's say I'm going to uh, work with the production designer to come up with the shape and I want to come up with maybe uh, this is one of the looks that I want uh, to try out. So I can just move that forward a little bit and automatically uh, my uh, look is generated. And so I can uh, ask him if this works and I can actually do that while he's sitting uh, next to me, which, which makes life a lot easier. Um, and also, for example, if I like these scoops and I want to add another uh, two of them, so I can just go ahead and select uh, these two cylinders here and let's say duplicate them and uh, move them uh, down like so to here and forward and uh, let's say I just uh, choose to go ahead and take these and add them to my subtraction list so then that goes ahead and creates another two scoops uh, for for maybe four gun ports in front of the sub and uh, again um, all this can be done uh, very quickly uh, it's taking a little bit more time here because again my me den uh, mesh density is is a little bit high and again that's because I'm uh, at the final stage of, the, of this, but of course, if you're working uh, with kind of these models down here, they'll, it's a pretty fast process. Uh, so not only can you move things around, but you can also scale them. So let's say you know you want to try a version of the sub where it's kind of got a bigger uh, tank or this bottom part over here, you can do that easily. And uh, again, uh, you want to try a version that uh, this is kind of scooped backwards over to here, like so. 
and again, uh, just happening very quickly. And uh, you know, maybe this is the one that they uh, like more. They want this to be more further back. Uh, and uh, you know, I can choose these uh, cylinders and duplicate them and create two gun ports down below. Whatever. So basically, um, really easy to iterate and create designs. And then once you're happy with the design that you want, then uh, you basically just go to the mesh fusion item and you generate a. Uh, uh, convert it to a mesh. Notice here that you can duplicate and convert it to a mesh too, which is what is recommended. And uh, the reason that is is because if you do that, then you basically uh, can come back and do more changes if uh, th they are required. So let's say at some point you decide that this is the look you want to go for. So uh, you just go ahead and say uh, duplicate and convert to mesh, and um, give it a name and uh, Moda goes ahead and does that for you. And this is the, the resulting mesh. And notice that the topology in this area is really nice. All quads and everything is great. Uh, in the junctions it's really good too because it creates this nice strip for you. And by the way the size of the strip can be uh, changed as well dynamically when you're in the mesh fusion mode. Um, and if you're interested in seeing all these in action I highly recommend going to the Luxology or um, the Foundry webpage for Moto and and mesh fusion and I think there's some three really good videos that kind of go through the process um, but um, once you're done with it and you look at the mesh notice that uh, the topology is pretty decent however there are some areas like for example there's some poles here there's a six point pole here there's a seven point pole here a bunch of triangles things that uh, topology wise uh, you might not want especially if you're going to take this into ZBrush and maybe uh, sculpt some cut lines on it or add some details and whatnot so uh, once you're uh, you've generated this mesh and again it's a great starting point and again uh, you can arrive to this very very quickly by adding and subtracting the the parts here or your own parts and uh, then you just basically right click and export this uh, selected layer into uh, its own um, you know, into an OBJ file, and that's what we're going to go ahead and load into ZBrush and 3D Coat. And here we are in ZBrush where I've imported the OBJ file that Mesh Fusion created. And uh, notice here that uh, the polygons I have in these areas are nicely uh, divided uh, up in uh, their quads, which is desirable. And also in the junction areas where these shapes are connecting, they're all quads, and that's great. But in between the two, uh, Mesh Fusion has created some interesting topology where you've got a bunch of different triangles, again, which are not as desirable, uh, especially if uh, there's so many of them. And also uh, notice here that I have some poles specifically over here where I've got uh, one vertex and a whole bunch of edges coming out of it, uh, which is called valence. And uh, I've got a valence of well over five here. Five is the most you want. Six is maybe OK if it's not in a prominent area. But anything more than that, when you sculpt on it or move it further along the production pipeline, uh, when you render it, etc., uh, it can create some unpredictable and undesirable effects. So what I want to do is I want to get a kind of a uniform uh, pattern on this and uh, to do that I will have to remesh it or retopologize it. Uh, retopology takes a long time, uh, remeshing uh, takes a lot less time and it's fairly automatic. So what I'll do first is duplicate this model. So I'm working on a uh, duplicate of it and uh, let's go ahead and uh, go into geometry, so tool geometry, zero mesher, and uh, just choose the defaults uh, to see what kind of results it comes out with. And what we get here is, uh, you know, the nice thing about what we get is we get uh, very minimal geometry, but we have some issues. For example, here I've got this uh, kind of a uh, a, scra a scrambled up or scrunched up area over here that's uh, that we got to work on and also here notice there's a bit of a chatter here on this curve because it didn't uh, do it as nicely as it uh, did it over here and uh, I've got a little bit of chatter over on this side and over here as well but for the most part uh, you know it did create uniform geometry for me I uh, lost a little bit of the shape but I can always reproject my uh, previous model onto this one to get what I wanted but uh, let's go ahead and undo that and uh, let's uh, help Ziri Mesher along here. So the first thing 
you can do is, is uh, go into your brushes and uh, press the Z key uh, to get the zero mesher guides. Okay, and uh, notice here I've put that on my interface because it's something I use all the time. Uh, next thing, the other thing also you want to do is turn on symmetry so that you're creating these curves uh, that are going to help zero mesher on both sides. So I'll just go ahead and uh, draw that curve over here like so. Uh, and um, continue down this way. And one of the nice things you can do about, with these curves is you can go ahead and smooth them uh, so you know they don't have any uh, jutting edges. Uh, and uh, so there's one curve. And the other thing I want to do here is go ahead and create a curve around this object to tell uh, Zero Mesher that I want topology to go around it. And uh, I could do the same over here as well like so. And along this edge as well. Alright. And uh, while I'm at it I'll add another one over here. Say that I kind of want topology to flow around this way. Again I can smooth these curves out. And uh, I'll go ahead and hit the zero measure button see what uh, kind of results I get there. Okay, so a little bit better. I've got uh, a little bit better topology here. I kind of would have liked this if it if it uh, went along, but uh, this is fixed over here, and this is looking a little bit better. So uh, and this looks like it's working as well. So this might be a good starting place for me. One of the things I might want to do first is uh, notice here that. Um, yeah, there's a six pointer here that can be fixed, and there's kind of a some funky stuff happening over here with the triangle as well that can be fixed. So again, these can be easily, uh, you know, you can load this back into Modo and or whatever modeling program you use and modify those, but uh, just with a little bit of uh, work here you can get this uh, to work for you. Uh, another thing you might want to do is you don't have to have uh, such low uh, topology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this back to uh, pre zero measure here and uh, instead of using adaptive uh, maybe just say well why don't you give me half of the number of polygons that are here and uh, see how that fares. So we'll just go ahead and click on zero measure again. Okay, well this is looking a little bit better and uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go with this. Uh, notice here that again just a little bit of smoothing and these uh, features are, are done well. This is working over here as pretty good. Uh, this is working over here. I would have liked the flow lines to kind of cut around this uh, but this is workable so just uh, with a little bit of smoothing here what I'll do next is just go ahead and uh, turn off uh, polyframe and give this a couple of divisions and now I'm ready to sculpt on it. So I've got evenly distributed topology so it's easy to do that and if I want to for example add some cut lines to this and let me uh, change my ra lazy radius here and uh, just go ahead and draw out my cut lines like so. And supposing I want to draw another one that goes this way. Again, you know, uh, I could have maybe chosen a, a bigger depth, but this is working for me. And if I want to add some features uh, onto this surface, so let's say I want to have, you know, I've got some uh, stamps that I've created. So let's say I want to put a, a rivet here somewhere, and which is less intensity, and maybe divide this one more time before I do that. And let's say I want to put some rivet points on here. I can do that very easily just by. Um, you know, adding those on here. And since this is uniformly divided geometry, it will uh, take those very nicely uh, and uh, and uh, there you have it. So this is the way you would uh, remesh it in ZBrush. Again, a pretty straightforward process. All you got to do is make sure you help it along with some uh, some guides and uh, you know do a little bit of trial and error. Uh, it works pretty fast and you can get some uh, great results. And here we are in 3D 
coat where we're going to go ahead and import the model. So to do that, we'll just go to the file menu, uh, import and import for Otopo. Choose our model, load it in, and uh, we come up with this dialog box that uh, has three parameters for us to change. First one is the intermediate resolution, which is something that uh, 3D Coat does in between uh, when it's trying to do its uh, remesh. And uh, we can choose an approximate poly count. And we start out with about 140,000 polygons. So let's go for about half of that. So let's just choose 70,000 polys, uh, maybe even less. Let's go for 30,000 polys for our initial model. And if we want smoothing, we'll, I'm going to drop that down to one, click on OK. Um, and then the next thing, it's loaded it in, but for some reason 3D uh, code puts this uh, dialog box in front, so let's get rid of it. And uh, here's the model, uh, and uh, in this section what we do is we can choose where we want denser geometry and where we want not so dense geometry, and I'm not really going to need that, but one thing I will also do here is turn on symmetry again, so X symmetry uh, here, so that it does the same thing on either side. Uh, I'm just going to click next on this section. And here is something that, again, uh, just like uh, Zero Mesher, where you can draw in some guides to guide um, 3D coat along. So I'll just go ahead and draw this. Uh, it's got the capability of smoothing the curves as well. So I'm basically doing similar things to what I did in ZBrush, where I'm going to go ahead and draw where I want that topology to flow. Uh, maybe do one this way as well and smooth the curve. Uh, if I don't want the chatter, I can uh, go ahead and do this. And I can join these curves up if I want to. Uh, smooth that. Similarly here. Like so. Smooth that. Draw one that way. Draw another one. Oops. This way like so. And uh, I think that should be enough. I'm not liking what's going on here. So I'm going to move these points back outside like so. I think when I smoothed it, it went into the geometry, which is not what I wanted. And here we go. Okay. All right. So this looks good enough. And uh, we'll just go ahead and click Next and see if uh, if what we get is is something that's going to work for us. And here we have uh, the result of what 3D code has done. And uh, for the most part, again, we've got some decent topology. Uh, you know, nice even quads, uh, some weird funky stuff happening here uh, in this area, and uh, for the most part this, this works. I mean, this, it got this feature uh, correctly. It got uh, this working somehow. Again, with a little bit of smoothing, it yeah, goes a long way, and uh, there we have it. So we have, again, some um, uniform topology that we can sculpt on and work with. Again, if you were to uh, want to do this uh, right, you probably have to manually retopologize it, which is, uh, you know, again, depending on what the uh, intended outcome is, uh, you can uh, choose to do that, or, or uh, maybe just work with what you've got here if it works for what you want to do. Again, if you're just going to sculpt and create uh, some sort of a, a, a normal map or a depth map, uh, this will work. But if you uh, want to, you know, be a stickler and, and get it to be more perfect topology, uh, you can do that as well just by um, uh, spending some time and maybe using the manual uh, retopology tools in 3D Coat or uh, in ZBrush uh, or a Topo Gun or some other application. But again, um, just a, a really nice way of getting models uh, that start out uh, as you know uh, this mesh fusion 
uh, model and then uh, bring it in into uh, ZBrush or, or 3D Coat, uh, you know, or Topogun or whatever applications you choose to use and, uh, and modifying the topology a little bit to make it work for you. But again, the capability of doing this iterative design is something that's really powerful, something that's really useful, uh, and something that um, you might want to uh, look into in your workflow if uh, you do uh, iterative design and uh, that will do it for this week's tutorial. So I uh, hope uh, this was useful for you. If it was, please uh, uh, click on like, uh, maybe share it with some friends, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.